And how come you didn't just write to me? Welcome to Q&A with A and V. I'm Vincent Racaniello, and joining me tonight from New York, Amy Rosenfeld. Hi, Amy. Hello, ben. Hello Vincent. How are you today? Well, the um, commute was a little trying, but I'm here. Did um, you have dinner? No, I just came from the car right down here. I had my raincoat on and my shoes. <laughs> well, you don't usually wear shoes in your house? I thought that was only a my house thing. No, usually you don't wear I don't wear, wear shoes. shoes in my house. It's bad feng shui. Um, but we are here, and I thank you, Amy, for patience. And, well, luckily, uh, I had us. two. Luckily, I had two trays of black assays, and I had to make overlay. And so you were able to get more more done than you no normally would before. 8, no, I would have finished. I just would have done the overlay afterwards. I would have done the two trays, but I wouldn't be so separated from my annoyance of the grant writing process with our collaborators. Yes, it's been a difficult week for Amy because we've been writing grant with uh, collaborators who have not been cooperative, to put it mildly, right? Cooperative? <laughs> That's not a good way to put well, it. Well, one is fabulous. The other yeah. one leaves something to be desired. <laughs> oh, boy, it's tough. I agree. I agree. All right. Uh, let's dive into the questions. What do you think? Well, where's your light now? Now your light burnt out. Uh, it's okay. It's like the train. It burnt out, right? There we go. How is All right, possible look. possible that, that your light burns out, your train doesn't work, and I don't know, what, and our collaborators leave, well, at least one leaves something to be desired. Vincent and Amy, do you think the super engine theory could be the aha moment in understanding the seriousness of this virus? What steps should be taken to prove or disprove this going forward? Any thoughts, Amy? Well, I think you should take it. You talked to them on TWIV last week. Yeah, but so I don't think it's seriousness of the virus. I thought it was, again, I thought it was after virus cleared and long COVID is at way after virus cleared. So they think it's a big super antigen of, of SARS-CoV-2 is a big plays a big role in MIS MISC and MISA but they also think it may play a role in the in severe COVID not before long COVID but severe COVID where you get a lot of cytokine production they think uh, it could play a role there so I think what they need to do is, is look in patients with severe disease and see if they have a skewed T cell repertoire which is indicative of a super antigen um but I, I found it very exciting, and I think it's the first pa serious aspect of COVID that's uh, starting to get dissected at a molecular level. And I think Amy liked it too, right? Yeah, I did. I think that they're good. Um, but I don't believe that there's been a T-cell skewing that... Uh, actually, there has been a T-cell skewing that has been reported. It just escapes me exactly what it yeah. is. But... I wonder if you had made an ORF8 vaccine, if ORF8 is the one that's skewing the T cells. Mm hmm. Might be, but but it's, the, the no the the, ske the T cell skewing comes from the super antigen binding the T cell receptor. Yes, but what I want to know is if you but ORF8 is supposed to antagonize the T cells. I see. Right, because well, yeah, it doesn't yeah. allow for MHC, right? Yeah. So yeah, even if right. you had super antigen, because super antigen is like S1 after the cleavage, right? Yeah. From someone what wants, I understand. Someone wants me to be level with you. Well, I can't well, raise my chair. Well, I don't know how to lower my chair, and we're not going to start now. And I can zoom in a bit. How's that? All right. Fine. I'm bigger, but that's okay. Oh, wow. Novavax. Well, she should read the phase three trial paper that I sent you earlier this week. Yeah, there's a phase three results. I think we will probably discuss that on Friday. But uh, we had hoped to mention it tonight, but we kind of got derailed. 
Funny. And um, but the, between the fa- phase three results and you know emergency use, it still could be a few months, right? For sure. Yeah. So don't hold your breath. But uh, Christina Naula, who's on TWIP, um, she's in the Novavax trial actually in Scotland. And, uh, yeah, this is Patricia. Said, I could have sworn Vincent had a guest uh, who got Novavax. Yes, yeah, so, but she was in the trial, so um, it's different, right? Well, isn't she blinded? She doesn't know what she got. They unblinded them and offered them, I, th- I can't remember the details, offered them to get to give a vaccine to everyone or something like that. Yeah, they unblinded it. Um, what do we know, Amy, about RA and COVID-19? If a rheumatoid arthritis patient is already on methotrexate, that lowers antibodies. Is a booster the definitive answer? Hmm. I'm not an MD. Now, Dick Daniel says that, uh, yeah, methotrexate blunts the immune response. Um, but he said, I think, on one of his shows that you should discontinue for a period of time while you get vaccinated. Whether a booster or not is an issue is a good question, but I don't know. I don't know. I think that you need to talk to an MD. I'm not an MD. I don't pretend to be an MD. Well, the Vax hesitants are waiting for Novavax like it's the Holy Grail. Why would they wait for Novavax? Because it's a, it's a, a, it's an approved platform. If you guys hadn't sold. Protein. Yeah, if you guys hadn't sold. Oh, my God, we made mRNA. Everybody wouldn't have known. I mean, you guys got to think this marketing thing through. <laughs> we'll see if the if the percentage of vaccinations in the U.S. goes up when Novavax come out. Maybe. That would be good, sure. really. Yeah, I think anything that gets people vaccinated is, is good. But I think you guys need to learn how to market. Take a marketing class. This was not a smart marketing extra. Exercise. I'm not a marketer. I'm not a marketer. Of course you are. That's how you get grants. You market your ideas to the NIH. Mm. Okay. Uh, when will you chat with Jillian Michaels air? I don't know. They didn't tell me. I don't know. And and see, Rafe is skeptical. If Novavax arrives, they'll find some other made-up reason to avoid it. You could be right. It's fine. Can anyone answer this? Did Moshe and Ivet say Yvette say circulating S one? No, it's not circulating S one. It's it's virus. She, they think it's. Vi- I asked her that. She thinks it's virus binding to the T cell receptor. But I think uh, we still don't know everything there. Okay. Are people with herpes simplex virus in the immunocompromised category should they get the booster? No, they're not immunocompromised. It's most likely latent. Everybody has some kind of herpes virus. Yeah, Yeah, they're not immunocompromised just because of having herpes, right? Right. Plus when it reactivates, it only reactivates in one dermatome. That's that's varicella zoster. Well, you only get a cold sore here from herpes, right? You don't get cold sores all over. Yeah, okay. Uh, how feasible is the ACE2 decoy concept, which is based on interaction of ACE with uh, soluble RBD? Zero. I'm let, zero. I was going to say I'm going to let Amy t- <laughs> take that one because I know her views on soluble receptor therapeutics. Zero. They all failed. They have all failed. Yes. Zero. And I'm going to have to tell somebody that that is not a possibility for something else. Try again. Of the many COVID symptoms, how many are due to the virus's direct effect and how many are due to the body's response? What is direct effect like cell death? Yeah. I'm not clear that it's lytic in the body. No? No, like rhino is lytic in healer cells, but it's not really lytic in the body. The cells just, if you put it in ALIs, that apparently this, uh, like when you look at... um, well, he hmm. only did like a major group rhino, so like, let's say rhino 16. He says that they just pop off and then the mm-hmm. epithelial lining just comes right back, like immediately. It just. Huh. Um, yeah. so, so, so Susan Weiss never really said anything. 
Susan Weiss no, never. Susan Weiss never said. Okay. And plus, what if it's plus fusion, like the syncytia formation would not make it better. But things like fever, headache, chills, loss cytokines. of appetite, those are cytokines. Yeah. So good fraction are cytokine based. But what fraction is cell, CPE is a good point. We don't know. Yeah. That's a good question. Any thoughts on this preprint? Transmission reductions declined over time since second vaccine for Delta reaching similar levels to unvaccinated by 12 weeks for Chaddox. Um, I haven't seen it. Have you, Amy? No, the title is too confusing. <laughs> Don't believe her when she says that, all right? Nothing, nothing in virology is confusing to Dr. Rosenfeld, okay? No snide remarks. I don't know. I haven't seen it, but it's an observational study. Many of these have problems, and you let's get it through peer review and make sure it's fixed. You have to really look at how they're doing the experiment. I don't know. I thought my answer was fine. <laughs> Too confusing title. Can't read the article. I thought it was fine. I vaguely remember, recall something about an immune cell evolution process inside a single immune system from a TWIV. Yeah, we're talk that's all about uh, hy somatic hypermutation. It's the way the antibody genes uh, evolve and have different specificities with time. That happens in the germinal centers of the lymphoid organ. So it's a very important part of the antibody response. And that's why Amy always says, wait longer between doses. <laughs> The thing is, folks here, folks, when I say folks, it's it's this lovely community. I'm not being yeah, yeah well, what's the what, what, what do you want to say? Amy is, I've noticed over the past year, she's almost right all the time, which is enormously frustrating because I have arguments with her why she's wrong. And then six months later, she's right. So yes. <laughs> and all of you who want to cast aspersions on Amy, just remember that. I've known her for 20 years, and damn it, if she isn't right a lot. <laughs> yes. But I do like it when people complain, and they're like, oh, well, she's so weird, and she corrects the other people, and she's just a she just goes out to disagree with, um, to do disagree, and I'm just like, seriously? Do you guys even listen to what you say? Uh, like. Folks, uh, if you listen to the last TWIV, I, my pick was the book about COVID vaccines uh, by Gallagher, I think is his name. Goldberg, I thought. Oh, I don't remember. But anyway, I read a passage where they talk about Carico Catalan, who... I'm not as bad as she is. Cut or from the same cloth. To... You know, very, yeah, con not... very contentious, but usually right. And you have to just deal with it. You two seem confused about, confused about gain of function. We are not confused about gain of function. Gain of function created but, a new phenotype. Wait, like but Amy this, says, but Amy says, saw passage making attenuated vac vac attenuated vaccine is not gain of function. It is the gain is safety in humans. Please discuss. Gain of function means that you gave somebody, you gave the entity a new property. Not the right. human. You gave the entity a new property. Right. And what, By the attenuating virus a virus, I did not give it a new property. That's right. I gave it, I weakened a property that it already possesses. Exactly. Yes. Now, whether or not it's it, that weakened property results in, in more, less virulent more safe virus in humans is by coincidence, right? Because I could take that same virus and let's say now I can infect, you know, an orangutan. Maybe it'll kill the orangutan. Yeah. Then it would be a gain of function. It's, a, it's all about what you measure, right, Amy? Yeah. I mean, it could have a gain of function, but maybe you just didn't measure it. So, but in general, attenuation is a loss of function. How did the overlay go? It's good. It's done. It's done. They're they're gonna crank out some data on Sunday, hopefully. 
I'll be counting a lot of plaques. Highly recommend watching Sanjay Gupta on Joe Rogan. Who's what? Who? Which one is he now? Is he the CNN guy? Yeah, he's the CNN guy. No, I'm not interested in what Sanjay Gupta has to say. I stood next to Sanjay Gupta before I went on to CNN last year. Not impressive. I'm channeling Amy, by the way. Yeah, he's not impressive. There's lots of people who are not impressive that I'm still waiting for the genius to arrive. And then when I said that to somebody over lunch, he said, well, it's, he said something, it's fleeting. And I said, it must be fleeting. Remember that? He said, I got in the elevator with the guy. He said to me, did I kiss the ring? I said, no, I was waiting for the genius to arrive. And he said it was like fleeting. Remember that? We were I having, do. you guys I were do. having paninis. I do. It was very funny. Paninis, lovely. Are there any news about how protected breastfed babies are when the mother is vaccinated after having the baby? How long would the antibodies be passed on? Monday's paper in Nature Medicine. I sent it to you and Daniel. Maybe Daniel will discuss it. This is about uh, maternal, passing. yeah, maternal immunity to the neonate. So the antibodies are passed on during fetal development, and then, of course, when the baby's born, there's no more passing unless breastfed happens, and then as long as the mother breastfeeds, the baby will continue to get antibodies as soon as you stop. In a few months, they've declined. Yeah. Yeah, you can read the paper, the Nature Medicine paper. Uh, maybe we should do that for Friday also. What do you think? I don't know. We've got too many things to do. you got to make a list, and then we got to do, like, we got to weed it down and okay. assign things to I'll run it by you things. tomorrow. I understand I'm going to see you in person tomorrow, so I'll run it by you. Well, we have a meeting at noon, and we have to work on the IRB. We have to finish that letter. We have to do some math, which, you know, we're not good at. That's going to take a long time. we got to do some math. And, uh, of, okay. we got to go tail in uh, ear clip and genotype. Okay, okay. Mechanism of action of the shingles vaccines. Shingles vaccine is a, the new one, is a glycoprotein, a protein produced and adjuvanted, purified. I think it's an in insect cells. I guess it's very much like Novavax spike, right? And um, it's yeah. adjuvanted and it's wonderfully protective. It uh, is injected, gives you uh, antibodies and T cells, and that prevents reactivation apparently. So the the virus is latent in, in neurons and it is periodically reactivated from stress or old age or both. And the, apparently the antibodies keep it from causing lesions, which can be painful. Yep. Does acetic or propionic acid play any role? I, I, I don't know wh why you would ask that. I mean, these are found in cells, right, Amy? Acetic Local. acid? Maybe not acetic acid. It's a fermentation product, right? Maybe. What about propionic acid, propionate? You think not? Not that I'm aware of. So maybe he's asking if they would inhibit. Uh, they couldn't. I don't know if I don't know if the virus is acid stable, and it's there. Well, I don't know a lot about propionic acid, but acetic acid is vinegar. It's not like. HCl or sulfuric acid, you know, that yeah, has yeah. been burning the holes in my clothes or my one pair of jeans. Yeah, Amy uses sulfuric acid for one of her experiments and uh, it's burning her, her jeans. Yes, that's why we wear the same jeans when we're doing that assay because no point in ruining more pants. Can you explain the Marek disease phenomenon chicken? Okay, so Marek disease is a herpes virus of chickens. There is a vaccine that is used by chicken farmers to prevent them from dying, okay? The vaccine is not, does not prevent infection. So the virus still transmits among chickens. And Andrew Reed out of Penn State published a paper a number of years ago suggesting that the ability of the virus to still pass from chicken to chicken despite being vaccinated has led to increased virulence. And we did the paper on TWIV. We did not feel that the data supported the conclusions. 
that's the end of that. And we have heard nothing since. But the paper is used, you know, inexplicably as an excuse not to vaccinate because you would just select more virulent viruses. Wait a minute. I, Let me get this straight. <laughs> so you vaccinate, no, 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 no. You vaccinated chickens. Right. Chickens that got protected. Against dying, yeah. Against dying. But virus, the, but virus transmits again throughout the coop. Yep. Yep. Okay. Correct. So, you vaccinate people against polio. Right. Prevents paralysis and dying. Still pooped in through the water. Right. But it's more <laughs> virulent. So polio today is more virulent than polio in 1953 was. No, no, not at all. Okay, so what's so am I missing something? No, as I said, we didn't particularly like the conclusions well, of the I'm paper. Just, I, I'm just curious as how he concluded this, considering the fact that like the majority of vaccines, obviously we missed the point. The majority of vaccines don't protect against transmission; they protect against severe disease, yeah. and it doesn't result in more virulent virus because we've been vaccinated. So I don't know how long they've been vaccinating against Merck's chickens. Okay. I really didn't follow it, but we've been vaccinating against polio for what? 70 years, 70 years, almost 1953, right? right? Yes. Almost 70 years. Yeah. Almost my age. Right. Right. So, <laughs> And we probably have put it in 8 billion people. Mm-hmm. Easily. I, have I agree. 8 billion Amy. chickens been vaccinated? So, what, is, Amy, what you're saying is that people should publish papers saying this vaccine doesn't prevent infection and has not, the virus has not become more virulent. Right? Pretty much. Yeah. So, what that's I'm the story, folks. Is, like what I'm saying is like when you publish these papers, yeah, you gotta like think about what you're saying. Like, does it make any biological sense? And then try like the way I was trained. You find you do your experiments. You come up with a hypothesis. You fit it into a paradigm. You test it out, and where it doesn't fit into the paradigm, then you then you you publish and you expand. It's unclear to me that he tested. He came up with a hypothesis fit it into a paradigm and it didn't fit the paradigm. That often happens, you know that. People then they try well, and yeah, fit it, make it fit. <laughs> right, but but okay. All right, let's move Whatever. on. Let's move on from the chickens. All right, to be extra careful, if I have visitors that flew in, should I have them quarantine a few days before visiting? How long? Uh, I think you should get them tested frequently. And so t day two of arrival, but then you should test them again because they could still be incubating. So uh, I would, I don't know, Amy, what do you think? Day two and, and day four would be good and wear a mask in the meantime? I would do day two and day five. And and also depends where they've come from. If there's a lot of active COVID where they're coming from, right? Or you don't, you don't yeah, care about that. I actually, don't really right? care that much about that. Yeah, I just I think like you should just I think they should be tested, you know, before they got on the plane. So let's say they got tested two days before they got on the plane, then they get tested two days after they arrive. So now there's a let's say there's a four day window. So let's say the day of exposure was the day before they got on. Mm -hmm. They mm -hmm. took the test. Right. So that would be four days. So that would be fine. And then if you did day five, you'd be at like nine days, which is basically in the middle of what we think the incubation period. And if they're negative, I would go with it. Uh, are, are you aware of any tech that will change the game in virology? Are there any new or developing technologies that will make discovering viruses easier? What do you think, Sequencing? Amy? Sequencing? Well, we already have that, right? We, right? we have. I mean, I don't really think that there's going to be a new technology that's going to make it easier. I think, like, as sequencing technology becomes faster and stuff, it will just make it faster. Yeah. 
All right, it's not. It's eight fifty-five. I'll go to nine fifteen, and then I gotta go home. Thank you. Thank you very much. Your presence is always appreciated, and I'm not being snide. Okay, I'm having a. I'm having a interesting day. Any thoughts on giving a four-year-old flu vaccine and COVID vaccines a few months apart? Perfectly fine. I think that's fine. Yep, a few months is great. If circulating S1 is causing toxicity, can we merge dialysis and ELISA? Pull blood into an S1 antibody-coated container and then put it back in the blood. No. First of all, we don't know it's causing toxicity. And you can't do this complicated treatment unless you know for sure. So are you convinced that S1, circulating S1, Amy, is toxic? No, but I'm also not convinced that I want to put my, I want my blood to go through a dialysis machine. Yeah, um, with an antibody code container, right? <laughs> yeah, I'm no. not clear I want to do that. No. You need, yeah, this is, this isn't, no, not happening. Can you elaborate on super antigen as it relates to long haul COVID? Amy, I don't think we know if the super antigen effect is involved in long haul COVID, right? Right. It's a theory. We have good evidence for MIS, perhaps, and they had a theory that it was involved in severe COVID pre long haul. But whether it's involved in long haul, we don't know. It could be. I don't see why it couldn't, but no one's looked at that. Yeah, it could be. Will the AstraZeneca booster work? Is immunity to the vector an issue? No, the immunity to the vector is not an issue. And yes, AstraZeneca vector booster will work. Did you not just see the information about Johnson and Johnson's booster? It just yep. came out. Yeah, that, that looks like a that good looks idea. Good. Yeah, mm -hmm. it pushes it over 94%, right? Um, mm -hmm. That's so very good. Maybe the idea of having one and done was not good to begin with, Amy, right? Probably not, but you know. They didn't ask my opinion. More people need to ask Amy her opinion. Well, somebody did ask my opinion, and then I said to them, but I don't think about this every day. You should go talk to this person who thinks about it every day. And so that's what they're doing. Could the lower immunity of, or waning immunity be explained partly to how close both doses were given for most people with the RNA vaccines? Amy has a thought on this, I know. No. Well, I don't believe in the term lower immunity and waning immunity. And I don't think it had anything to do with the doses. I think the fact that the, I think your, your immune response just wasn't efficient because they were so close together. But I think you got a spike. You did some uh, hypersomatic mutation and class switching. You went down a little bit. You plateaued. And that's where we are which is exactly what you want is you want a lower plateau. Otherwise you're clogging up the blood with stuff and you can't pump it through your body. This waning immunity though, Amy, as you said, I don't like the term. No, it like always wanes. Term. Antibody levels always go down after immunization. Right, but I don't like the, I don't like the, I don't like the term and I don't like the connotation that of right. the way it's been interpreted by people. I think it's a miss there. You know, you don't like the term breakthrough infections. I don't like this term at all. Because it's people, wrong. People don't care what we like or not. They continue to use the terms. Well, maybe that's the point of the textbook. Maybe you should say in the textbook, these terms are not appropriate because they don't, they're, yeah. in, they're incorrect. And this is why. I think you guys could have a chapter. Glenn would love it. I think well, this, he's the next I think edition he's into is those kind of things. The next edition is not for another five years, so we have a ways to go. Why do some people get so sick when they get the shingles shot, and others do not? I've asked a few people on a recent podcast who who did that? I don't remember who it was. And they said, "No, we didn't have any reaction." Amy, why do people get so sick? Some people. Some people. They may have allergies or something. I don't know. I get sick very easily. Others I think don't. Some people make vigorous immune responses and others make less vigorous. And the cytokines early in vaccination mediate those. And I think some people are 
are, are hyper responders and others are not. Why? Well, that's a genetic basis most likely, but maybe difficult to tease out because it's probably multigenic. Could be. Would Staphylococcus enterotoxin B, which has a super antigen exposure, be prophylactic against cytokine storm by antibodies produced? There was a paper that said that. Because antibodies against SCB do uh, block SARS-CoV-2 infection, right? Yep. I don't know if it would be prophylactic against the cytokine storm, though, right? Might not be. Depends on what triggers the storm. Vaccines work. Daughter worked with unvaccinated, unmasked, very sick, COVID-positive co-worker, six hours. Co-worker died at home, never admitted to hospital. My daughter didn't catch it. Yeah, vaccines work. And they're safe. Yeah, that's but it's horrible that the co-worker died. It's horrible. Is the vaccine produced spike the entire spike or just a small subunit? And is it's a spike the same from mRNA and adenovirus vectors? Yes, they're the same. It's full length and it's glycosylated and blah, blah, blah. Some... So Pfizer tested a receptor binding domain mRNA vaccine early on, and it didn't do as well as the full spike. So they just went to that. And some people have made noise about making RBD protein. Do you remember that paper with Linfa Wang on it, Amy, where they found a, a cryptic epitope yes. in the RBD that was very broadly, that induced broadly neutralizing antibodies? So they suggested maybe we should immunize just with the RBD. Yes, but isn't that the same as what I've complained about by doing a receptor, soluble receptor? It is, yes. Okay. Now but we know. Think, not a good idea. We're not going to do it. We're not going to nope, do it. Not a good idea. If a population of infants were protected from any exposure to common cold viruses up to the age of 65 and then exposed, would they then suffer death hospitalization similar to covid <laughs> wow, that would be quite a feat to protect them until they were 65. I would say yes, they're going to get very severe uh, disease after, I guess these are common cold coronaviruses, right? If you have Why no immunity. Why does it have to be a common cold corona? Why can't it be a rhino? So, Amy, when people reach 65, have they already had multiple rhinovirus infections? Yeah, you get a rhino every year. People and depending with, on who you listen to, they believe that there's one species of rhino that lives in your nose that uh, that's a, totally asymptomatic. However, there's a flaw in that philosophy because people are tested for biofire and they don't come up positive. So if a person doesn't have antibodies, a gamma globulinemic, do they get serious rhinovirus infections? I believe so. I believe that's what we wrote. I believe so. You and I wrote something? Yeah. Just a joke. It's a joke. Yeah. I know. Yeah. I believe that they get severe enterovirus infections. Yeah. What What data would you need to see in relation to boosters being mandatory for everyone? Well, right now, the protection against severe COVID and hospitalization is in the 90s, at least for the mRNA vaccines. So if that dropped... But it's not dropping. They still protect you from severe disease and death. I think that they need to get back to me in five years, five to ten years. Just told Oliver today, I bet you you need a booster like in ten years. I'll be like tetanus. Thank you, Squoyster, for your contribution to the B BSL-4 for the incubator. There was something we, some joke we made about BSL. No BS in the uh, incubator or something like that. Do you remember that, Amy? I do no. remember they thought yes, but they thought you should be in BSL five. I wrote it on a sticky, but now I don't find it. You're never gonna find it. Oh, the gain of knowledge. It's another thing. I'll never find it. You have such faith in your coworker. Yeah. Uh, when will we stop wearing masks in North America? Uh I think in many places they've already stopped. I see fewer yeah. and fewer on the New York streets, right? Yeah, for sure. And more and more people on the subway, they're sitting there smugly thinking, and it's required, and it's like, 
What do you think you are? You think you're fooling someone? Oh, well. I don't well, anything. the thing is, is that nobody enforces it. Like the police are standing in the subway station. I see them all the time. I see people on the platform without masks, but I've also seen the police officers without masks. So nobody enforces it. On New Jersey Transit, they enforce it. They tell you to wear a mask. If they take your ticket and you don't wear a mask, they tell you. Not, well, they tell you, but like I was on a train coming back from uh, seeing the family one Sunday and... Uh, a whole family got on and the daughter did not wear a mask and she did not wear a mask the entire train ride. Mm -hmm. And they took her ticket. Oh, well. Uh, super antigen episode. You know, I didn't hear any comments. I got no emails about the super antigen episode. And I said, oh, I guess people didn't like it. But you here tonight, well, 565 of you, well, maybe not all of you, seem to appreciate it. That's good. I thought it was really good. Uh, Julian Michaels characterized Vincent in another interview as just a virologist with no political agenda. That's what she told me. She said, I really appreciate that you are, have unfiltered comments. You're honest and you have don't have a political agenda. Uh, I hope she publishes <laughs> the... Uh, <laughs> all right, all right. God, you always have to call me out. <laughs> oh. You know, if if they were saying I had no political agenda, that would be one thing. Why do they call new flu strain virus strains after mutating, but not SARS-CoV-2? Well, they're not. That's wrong. It's wrong to call them strains. They're variants. And Ron Fouché, when he was on TWIV not too long ago, called them variants. They're antigenic variants. So the word strain is is widely misused. Uh, super antigens are super. Please have an expert on immune to talk about more. There are also super antigens of B cells. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, we can get uh, more. Although I thought, so So Moshe, we asked him how to pronounce his name. He said like Moshe Diane. Diane, Diane. You remember him, Amy? Well, I wasn't born when Israel was becoming a state, but yes, I know who he is. <laughs> He was pretty good. Not, he's a pedi he's a pediatric clinical immunologist. But yeah, we could get a basic immunologist. You know, um, you the lady three. in Colorado, the lady in Colorado, Amy, who is big on super antigen. What's what's her name? She's at the the Jewish Institute for Immunology or something like that. I don't know. Okay. But you have three immunologists on immune. Really, you guys well, can't discuss it intelligently. Well, they're not experts on super antigens. Okay. What do you anticipate will happen with the possibility of a Moderna booster for those who've been vaxxed both times with Moderna? I don't think anything's going to happen. They'll get vaccinated. I mean, yeah, I, I, I don't, don't think understand there's a problem. the question. I mean, eventually the FDA will say yes. Just, I mean, it's gone through the same procedure as the Pfizer vaccine. The staffers didn't pass it on or didn't make any comments. And then lo and behold, the Pfizer one got approved. So this will do too. Fine. Perfect. Okay, move on. Well, Sanjita, you know, uh, your email to Daniel is queued up for tomorrow's episode. If I'm not mistaken, Sanjita is a, is a pediatrician. If original antigenic sin is a concern with COVID vaccines, would a new formulation of vaccine that uses a different antigen instead of spike be a better way to boost our immunity? Well, there's the, it isn't a concern, but you're saying hypothetically, right? No, see, with flu, a different antigen entirely? What would you use instead of spike? Because the spike is going to induce neutralizing antibodies. The other antigens won't, right, Amy? Not that we're aware of, but I'm not sure that we've tested everything. You know, those membrane proteins in the membrane, in the envelope. Yeah, they're called membrane and envelope, yes. So nobody's looked to see if antibodies to those would neutralize? No. Because it's all about blocking receptor, because that's the only way you can neutralize. Didn't you know? So, <laughs> yes, if you found another antigen that induced neutralizing antibodies, that could get around it if it were a problem, but... We don't know if it is. There's no evidence that it is actually so far. 
they say that after monoclonals, you will not make your own antibodies. How is it different from newborn with mum's antibodies being exposed to a virus? Would they also not make antibodies? What do you mean after monoclonals, you won't make your own antibodies? Your monoclonals go for three months, then you're immune naive. Then if you got exposed, you'd make your own antibodies. We just give you monoclonals so that you don't progress to severe disease because you're old. And we want to control it, right? Yeah. You still get infected. And depending on when you get the monoclonals, you could have had an infection for a while or, or less so. Right. So, so most, yeah. Right. I mean, it's exactly the same. Newborn. I mean, look at what we think. You got polio. You're going to think you're going to give the polio example. Polio 68. What's the difference? <laughs> Well, one it's of all them the is same, right? 68 you, is your like, virus. Yes, but that's the only virus that actually matters in the world. Polio doesn't matter anymore. Everybody knows that. So we think that in the old days when babies were infected with polio virus shortly after birth because of poor sanitation, the mother's antibodies prevented them from getting par par paralyzed, and then they developed their own antibodies as a consequence. And then when you delayed infection because of sanitation improvement, then the mother's antibodies are gone, and now the kids are infected and they get polio. Yep. So. All right, 9, 10, three more questions, and then I have to go answer Bert's email. Bert said he'd get us his review, right? No, this is similar. So he wanted to do May at my AFM meeting with Cameron. Okay. Okay. But Jim Gurn has already taken it, so I said he could, we could expand to June, and then he reminded me that Europick is June, and he wanted to go to Europick. So, of course, I'm just going to say, you know, he can be the alternative if, because Yuri's speaking in December, so if Jim okay. then decides that it's too close to when Yuri speaks, then we'll give it to someone. It's, all, there, uh, it's all a dance. Has there ever before been a successful adenovirus vectored vaccines for humans before J and J Sputnik AstraZeneca? And if so, did those vaccines exhibit similar side effects, like thrombosis not that and thrombocytopenia? Not that I'm aware of. No, they've been trialed. Uh, they've been trialed for HIV often, but then I wouldn't call them successful. <laughs> they didn't work well, at all. Well, considering the fact we don't have an HIV vaccine today on October. <laughs> 13th of 2021. Uh, yeah, I'm not calling anything successful. In your talk with Lex, you mentioned that the vaccine should be injected into the muscle. This must be the mRNA vaccine, I presume, if it goes into the blood Why? vessel. The spike. It could be any vaccine that's supposed to be injected into the muscle. Yeah. The spike protein can fuse with cells causing issues. Well, that's a hypothesis. I don't know if that's the case, right? Because who knows how much gets out of the muscle well who also knows that blood can be very toxic it can be very acidic who knows how long that particle stays mm -hmm. together when it's in an acidic environment and rna does not like acidity uh a captivating episode nearly as enthralling as larry garrett question super antigen versus mimicry mechanism of action this is, well they're totally different things right yes uh, super antigen turns on the tickles the T-cell receptor inappropriately, and the mimicry is when antibodies against the pathogen have some cross-reactivity with your own tissues and cause autoimmune issues. Very different. Mm -hmm. Has the news media done with COVID when Captain Kurt going to space on an Amazon oddly shaped rocket? Oh, is the media done is their top story. Oh, can you believe that? An overweight man going on a rocket, and Amy has told me how, how she feels about that this week, right, Amy? Yes. Um, well, there's nothing happening with COVID except the cases are going down, right? So the media doesn't want that. Well, I mean, this other story is more romantic. He played, he played what? <laughs> Dr. Kurt on Star Trek and he like has milked it up the wazoo and everybody knows who William Shatner is. So of course, if you could get him into a rocket to circle the earth, it's like having television come alive. Like, I mean, come on, if somebody rubbed a bottle and a genie popped out, Barbara Eden would be like, oh, this is so cool. Look, Bonnie knows you're, you're right also. She noticed that. <laughs> 
And Jenster said, you're always right. Okay. Uh, the Merck antiviral is a ribonucleoside analog. Does it still present the risk of virus developing resu drug resistance? So you, we've discussed this at nausea this week. It is a mutagen. Yeah. It, it templates Which, uh, wrong, yeah. Right. Which then causes a bump out, right? Like ribavirin causes a bump out like several base layers, right? Yeah. And then right. they come. Okay. And we've used ribavirin for hepatitis C for years. How much drug resistance is there? Uh, we've used it mainly for uh, respiratory C and, 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 and Hep C, RSV, and flu. But it's possible to select for resistant polymerases. Yeah, but, it, but like, so like the G64S change in the polio polymerase is very yeah. unstable. If you remove vi ribavirin, it goes back to wild type. Oh, interesting. So what Amy is saying is that she doesn't think we're going to get resistance to, mol to uh, molnupiravir, right? Highly unlikely. Okay, folks, you heard it here. October 13th, 9.16 p.m., in six months, let's see if Amy is right. Okay, she she may be She's an extremely critical thinker and and well read, and that's the basis of her statements. Yeah, well, uh, I know for a fact that G six four S reverts without any without. A, see another T shirt. Amy is always right. Not just right, Amy. That's the <laughs> one T shirt we already made. Amy is always right. Oh, I need another T shirt. Well, you may not, but. Others may. Here in Ecuador, some people receive J and J in the US are zero U per mil in the anti spike test. Are they candidates for the third dose of any other vaccine? I know Amy has thoughts on this. You know what? They got one dose, they can try again. Depends on I don't know when the zero mil on the anti spike test was taken. I mean, I don't know anything about when it was done, right? It's very vague. Yeah. So sure, go give them an, go give them a dose of something else. Fine. Come back I think, in six uh, months. I think there's no harm. But as Amy has said to me before, if they didn't respond exactly. twice, but what it, makes you think they're going to respond now? But it's only a one-shot vaccine, and it's unclear to me when the test actually. It's really not about how many how many times they got the vaccine. It's more about when the test was done. If the test was done on, you know, Tuesday and they got the vaccine on Sunday, well, of course there's zero, right? Yes. Okay. So uh, this that's why Amy will be teaching the Friday recitations. Oh, we're having Friday recitations? Well, no, I, I would never do it without asking you, but people would like to know if you could teach a recitation or two for sure. the, for the uh, live stream sure, biology but, course. Sure. Well, I'll have to pick a time. Not it would just problem. be you, just you alone, no Vinny. Be your yeah, show. I understood what me alone meant. I understood <laughs> that me alone meant no Vinny. I understood okay. that. I, you know, I have a, I have some grasp of the English language. You know, not uh, a lot. I'm not insulting not you. A I'm lot, just, but you know, I how have some scientists, grasp. you know, scientists but, are. We repeat things, right? Yeah, I know. Peter told you. Peter told you there's no harm in repeating things. That's right. I know. Peter Palazzi. <laughs> I know what Peter says. I've heard it. He I've said especially uh, especially to medical students. doesn't hurt to well, repeat Well, considering it. the fact that both his kids are medical students, we could ask them how they like dad's response. Well, they're, they're actually <laughs> doctors now, right? Way beyond medical yeah. school. So this well, is the paper that Daniel did. Yes, impact of SARS-CoV-2 vaccination on alpha and delta variant transmission. I'm not, I, I'm suspicious of that, frankly. I didn't say anything to Daniel, but I'm, I'm not sure that that's correct. I want to see how right. they measured it. You going to go? Well, one more and then I have to go. It's getting late and I have all to right. take care of Bert and I don't want to be rude. So. Dr. Fauci is confused about gain of function. That's just a comment. All right, he's 80. He's confused a lot about a lot of things. We'll give him a break. Oh, this is true. Crotty said the vaccine with the beta spike was inferior to ancestral. Yeah, he did say that. If Delta has a super antigen, would that make some variants a poor choice for a new updated vaccine? 
Yeah, so Delta has an enhanced super antigen, right? Because this has an amino yeah, acid change. Well, because it's more easily cleaved, right? Yeah, would that make some variants a poor choice? I, I don't know how what the relationship is, uh, Amy. Do you understand? Yeah, I don't. I don't know what the direct relationship is. So. All right, Amy. Thank you. All right, we have a lot to do tomorrow. All right, you bet. See you All tomorrow. Right. Bye bye. bye. Oh, it scares me when she says we have a lot to do. Oi. <sighs> do you think another vaccine will come out that doesn't make you make spike proteins since spike are bad and cause clots attack the virus from another angle? Well, you know, the clots are really low frequency. Uh, so I wouldn't dump spike because of that but could we make a better vaccine perhaps is it going to happen i doubt it it's very hard to test now that we have vaccines in use how do you test you, you can't have a control group anymore it's not ethical so you'd only be looking at antibody levels if you're lucky so i think it's going to be hard to make new vaccines Are there plant viruses that affect humans and human viruses? I'm sorry, that impact plants. No, in general, plant viruses do not infect humans. They pass through us. You eat plenty of them with your vegetables and fruits, but they pass through you. They don't infect you. They don't reproduce in you. you know, peppers have a lot of pepper viruses. Pepper mild mottle virus, the most abundant RNA virus in human feces because people like to eat peppers. So they don't, and human viruses do not impact plants uh, whatsoever. They're, they're quite distant, right? And I think that's part of it because the virus is, is intimately intertwined with the host. And so being intertwined with a, a mammal is very different from being intertwined with a plant. I would love to see a YouTube reaction video of these two reacting to the less smart questions the advisory panel members will ask at the meetings tomorrow and Friday. Well, I, I yeah, it, it might be interesting, but um, I don't really want to spend time doing that. I have, I tell you, folks, I'm I'm running out of time. I had to cancel TWIV this week. Well, fortunately, I did record a TWIV today, but I don't even know when I'm going to get it out because I have to work with Amy tomorrow. you think the beta variant AstraZeneca will be accepted? I think so. I don't think you need a beta variant booster, right? Because of what Crotty said, the beta variant the vaccine is not as good as the ancestral one. So it doesn't seem to make any sense to me. Yeah. Yeah. Um, this is not for me, but yeah, we're primary sources. Gupta is not a virologist, but he's got a report on everything. I understand that I wouldn't want to talk about everything. I do viruses, and I think because I work on viruses, it makes me effective. And my co-hosts on TWIV, likewise on microbiology, parasitism, immunology, my co-hosts are the experts, and I listen, I ask the question. But I, in every podcast, I get experts. I don't get generalists. And people like you who are here tonight, you want to listen to experts. And people who are taking my live stream course want to hear a virologist talk about viruses. It makes great sense to me. But most of the world doesn't. They want a few sound bites, and then they go on to their jobs and their lives. I get it. I get it. That's why we don't have a lot of listeners, but we have plenty. The new WHO team with 26 scientists announced want to hear your thoughts. Well, I have to look at them, and I'll, I'll do that for TWIV on Friday, okay? I can do that. That's a good idea. Should vaccines be aspirated to reduce chance of spike uh, getting into you know, blood vessels? 
Daniel Griffin says no. I think the chance of hitting a vessel and injecting all of the vaccine into the vessel is probably pretty low. Right? When you think about it, <laughs> you're sticking a needle in. What's the likelihood that it's not going to go completely through the vessel and it's going to end up in the vessel like a mosquito does? And the mosquito does that on purpose, right? It gets it right in. I think it's a low-frequency event. Who's cooler, Temin or Baltimore? <sighs> I'm not going to answer that. Can't do it. Temin's dead. Baltimore is very cool because he was the guy who co-discovered reverse transcriptase with Temin, right? And... Um, I, I did a postdoc with Baltimore. So to me, he's cool, but I didn't know Temin. So. Who do I recommend on TV to listen to? I don't listen to anybody on TV. It, it drives me crazy. In science, that is. I don't want to hear what they have to say. Um, I go, to, for virology, I go to the experts. And for other people, I go read the journals. Now, I realize you can't do that. But... Um, I'm let let other people here tell you who they like on TV. I don't particularly like most of the science reporting. You know, it's just often wrong, and it drives me crazy. Uh, I know you can't give medical advice, but talk to my doc. He said I don't need a booster. Yeah, I well, I've been saying for a long time we don't need boosters. Some people agree with me. Some people don't. Uh, yeah, I always take my shoes off before entering the house. I always had, I was, my parents did the same thing. Tonight I ran down to my office here so I could get this going. I didn't want to keep you waiting. I already kept you waiting for a half hour. I'm not a thoughtless person i would never want you to be sitting there i saw on the train i'm looking at the stream on the train i'm look god look at 150 people are waiting i can't cancel i have to get there and fortunately they got us off the train put us on another one and i got here in no time so that's why i had my shoes on but i've taken them off and i will put them outside later <laughs> <laughs> if breastfeeding passes along a significant number of antibodies then what happens if we vaccinate all the cows? Will we get antibodies from store-bought milk? Well, they pasteurize the milk, right? So that would get rid of the antibodies. It's heated. But let's say they didn't, and you could keep the milk safe by not pasteurizing it. That would be actually an interesting um, approach, but many people would not drink that milk. You know, many people do not like milk with, with bovine growth hormone in it. So I'm not sure that would be widely accepted. And, you know, the, the antibodies are transient. I suppose if you drank milk all the time, I don't drink milk. I have a little bit of half and half of my coffee, very small amount, and, and that's it. Well, I guess I have cereal. Yeah, I have cereal every day. Uh, when the three polio serotypes were all still around, did two or three circulate in the same geographic area at the same time, or did each tend to own an area of circulation? They were all, they were all co-circulating pretty much. Some, should someone 50-plus who never had a chicken pox get a vaccine to protect against it? For sure. Uh, so what vaccine? You never had chicken pox as a kid. So there are two vaccines, right? There's a chicken pox vaccine and there's a shingles vaccine. Now, I don't see why you shouldn't get the shingles vaccine. It's going to also protect against chicken pox. It's just my opinion. It's not medical advice. Living in Miami, I missed the second dose of shingles due to lockdown. No, you just get a second dose. You don't need to take two again because you've got memory B cells who will then activate when you get that second dose. You're good. Does asymptomatic staph aureus nasal carity prevalence in 30% of population lead to asymptomatic COVID? I don't know of any evidence that would suggest that. It is an interesting idea. I don't know what the mechanism would be, but I could see interference. So someone should do a, a, a trial or an observational study to look at that for sure. Oh, so 
Hello from Australia. Thanks for making this. The concern now about WHO from Dr. Tedros warning on Marburg virus. It's going to be a new pandemic. Do we need the same control? No. Marburg is not going to be a pandemic virus. Ebola virus is not even a pandemic virus. It just does limited circulation. It never gets adapted to people. I don't know what he's thinking. No. And we have the Ecuador question. Yep. I keep talking. Here you're talking about adjuvants and vaccines. What are adjuvants? How do they work? Well, <laughs> um, you should listen to my lecture on vaccines, which talks about adjuvants. But basically, adjuvants are additives, which enhances your immune response to vaccines. And um, vaccines that give the best immune responses are replication-competent vaccines, like Sabin polio vaccine, which you drink and it reproduces in your gut. And that's because these viruses damage cells and that activates uh, innate responses. You get inflammation, which gives a good antibody response. And protein vaccines do not reproduce so they do not give as good uh, an innate response and they don't give you they don't give you as good inflammation you don't get a good antibody response and t cell response so we add adjuvants to mimic inflammation these are typically innate immune system ligands that will cause inflammation and you get a good immune response and so in Europe some flu vaccines some inactivated flu vaccines are adjuvanted shingles vaccine is just a protein it's adjuvanted uh, novavax protein Spike vaccine is adjuvanted. These are safe, and they've shown to uh, enhance the antibody response. That's what a that's what an adjuvant is. I have not heard had Stuart Neal on TWIV. Now, many people have not been on, not because I don't want them on, but uh, here's the thing: uh, I do all the scheduling myself. And often when I'm asked to go on other pods, some producer calls me, not the host, and it says, your host, the host wants you to come on, like Jillian Michaels. Jillian Michaels didn't email me. Her producer did and set up the interview. So if I had someone to do that, I could get more people on. And hopefully one day I can have someone doing that at the incubator. Hopefully we can raise, once we're a nonprofit, we can raise substantial amounts of money and I can hire someone to do that. Listen to Sanjay. He meant well to educate the public. I'm sure he means well. Uh, thank you that our messaging and education is better. I don't need to be better. I just want to be accurate. But I don't particularly need to listen to others. I guess you should listen to learn. So I could do that. That's fine. Why are COVID vaccines not as well tolerated as traditional ones? Almost everyone I know was sick for one to two days. It doesn't happen with flu vaccines. Um, well, I think part of the reason is that flu vaccines are pretty poor at in inducing good immunity. They have a very low eff uh, efficacy, not efficacy, um, effectiveness. And the, the uh, COVID vaccines, the mRNA vaccines in particular, are good adjuvants. They're not adjuvanted, but the lipid and the mRNA act as an adjuvant, and they cause inflammation. And there's a lot of it there put in you. So I think that's the reason why. Sanjay tried to make a case for vaccines you should have made. So I... I yeah, I mean, I talked to Lex Fridman, I talked to Jillian Michaels, I made a case for vaccines as a virologist who has studied them for a long time, among other aspects of virology. I think I should be compelling. But Lex told me before our podcast, he said, be careful in using your knowledge to tell people what to do. I mean, I don't know what else you need. What, what knowledge doesn't work anymore? <laughs> I mean, it's kind of was a... I mean, I said to him, look, I'm never arrogant. And I say, I don't say to people, you should know better. And I know better than you. I would never say that. I try to educate people. And many people have told me because of listening, they have gotten vaccinated. So there's this sense, as you know, 
um, the degradation of expertise. There's a book whose title I forgot, but it's something like that. And it's true. It, the fact that I've worked on viruses for 40 years means nothing to some people. They will still tell me I'm wrong. I mean, I may be wrong, but most people have no basis for telling me that because they, they haven't even read the literature. So I appreciate, I, I agree that some people are better advocates for others, but he's what they have, right? People recognize him, many people trust him, etc. Are the big, long COVID numbers indicative that COVID could be a persistent infection? <sighs> and I'm very suspicious of this idea. I know a lot of people think about it. Today I did a twiv with David Tuller, who writes often for a virology blog about MECFS and long COVID, and he brought that up several times. I just don't see the evidence. Could it be persistent? I wouldn't say no to anything that's reasonable, but I don't see the evidence. And PCR is not good enough. Come on, folks, look for infectious virus. Oh, we can't find it. Well, maybe it's not there then. Now, persisting RNA, if it's translated, could make protein. But my gosh, if it's degraded, I don't think that that is, um, that's the issue. New monoclonal discovered in Switzerland looks effective, yet only good for six to seven months. Well, monoclonals, are that's actually longer than usual. Usually it's two to three months. They turn over. You inject the protein into people. Your body, you know, it's a humanized protein, so, but still your body will get rid of it or it will degrade. It has a half-life. It doesn't last forever. So, you know, I think... GSK has one that lasts a year, which is remarkable. So you can modify the antibodies chemically so that they last longer. But six to seven months is pretty good. But again, you put a protein in someone's blood vessel, right? It's circulating. Some of it's going to get taken up by cells, chewed up. Some of it's going to just break down. Some of it's going to be cut up by proteases. Proteins don't last forever. And if you only give a bolus, right, one injection, then it goes away eventually. Yeah, Rogan can have Daniel Griffin. That's fine. I think you <clears throat> need someone who can speak about basic virology. I mean, Dan Daniel is quite capable, but I would go. <clears throat> but he hasn't asked me. <laughs> yeah. I mean, Lex is a good friend of Rogan, and I could say to Lex... Mm -hmm. You know, get me on Rogan. When I was in doing the pod with Lex Friedman, he got a call from Rogan and he said, I have to take this and went off and talked to him. And he said, do you know Vincent Racianello? He couldn't even pronounce my name. Um, and I heard Rogan you say, no, because I could hear him across the room on the room on the phone. But I think Rogan may have gotten all he needs from listening to Lex Friedman. So. Oh, do I have a preferred term? Well, post-acute sequelae, I asked this of uh, Dave Tuller today, and he said post-acute kind of implies that it's o the acute infection is over and it may not be. Okay, I just told you I don't believe that, but do I have a preferred term? I think long COVID is fine because that's what it is. It is a, a continuation of the symptoms that you had in the beginning with COVID. They never go away. So that's long COVID. And anyway, the name is ensconced. The, that phrase is ensconced. It's not going anywhere. So we're stuck with it, right? Thank you, uh, Mitre One, for your contribution. Really, really appreciate it. Uh, whooping cough vaccine. I don't know. You, you get that periodically, yes. So I wouldn't call it waning. I would say and it's not just antibodies, it's T cells. So they not, may not be as long lived. And it's the same issue with influenza virus. The memory cells are not long lived in non adjuvanted flu vaccines. It's a fundamental problem. We don't know the basis for it, actually. Are interference produced in response to SARS CoV 2? So in some people, yes. Um, 
the more you make of interference early in SARS-CoV-2 infection, the less severe your outcome seems to be. So people who have severe COVID tend to make less interference in the beginning, and you have higher viral loads as a consequence. Interferons are not in themselves antiviral. They in, induce the synthesis of other proteins, which in turn have antiviral properties. And those there are over a thousand interferon-induced proteins, and some of them are specific for classes of viruses. So none of them are specific for one kind of virus, but they do different things. First shot of AZ usually causes more reaction fever than the second one, and it is reversed for mRNA. Well, I don't know. You're giving me anecdotal data here. I know for mRNA, the second dose is clearly more reactogenic. Um, it's because you, now you have a memory response, uh, which further generates inflammation because you have memory cells that are now being rapidly activated in T cells. As a long hauler over 18 months, they don't seem to be researching any non-hospitalized people. No shortage of us who would volunteer. Um, I, I didn't know that that was true, but you know the hospitalized patients are accessible to them, and perhaps they're they're they think that they're the priority. I just don't know, but I don't think we're we're barely into our studies of long COVID, so I'm sure more will happen. Probability of mainstream media reading my textbook, zero, yes, or listening to the podcast or reading my blog or any of that. I just, uh, yeah, they don't, they tell me they don't have time. But do some mainstream media do, so the author of, you know, the, the race for a COVID vaccine, he listens to TWIF, or at least he says he does. Factors contribute to cytokine storms. Well, an over-exuberant immune response, right? So inflammatory response happens early. The innate system is, is engaged. The cells produce cytokines, and those if, the, if you're making too much of those, that gives you a cytokine storm. Why certain people do it and others don't is not clear. But uh, from TWIV last Friday, it was suggested that in fact, superantigens may play a role in, in cytokine storm, even not in MISC patients. So that's an intriguing uh, cause, causality there. I like that, and I think that needs to be looked up. Thank you, Elizabeth, for your uh, contribution. And um, I really didn't know if I should do it late so i'm in the future i hope not to be late in the future but um it's good to know that you, you stuck around and by the way uh 614 are currently watching could you give me a thumbs up right right below the uh, video window there's a little thumbs up that would be great why because more people will see it i don't make i don't monetize these things right i don't monetize anything on youtube i get your contributions which is great i appreciate it but I don't monetize, so I don't want thumbs up for that. I just want the information to be disseminated. Folks, really, that's why I'm here, to teach. I don't need to be famous. I don't need to be recognized. I just want to teach you stuff. And when you say, my gosh, I learned something new today, that makes my day. Hyperimmune globulin is cheaper than monoclonals, easier to produce using measles or to be stored. So there's a problem with hyperimmune globulin in that. Well, that's different from convalescent serum. Yeah, I don't know the issues, Ian. I'm sorry that uh, prevent hyperimmune globulin being used. I think uh, it's also... So, you know, the issue with convalescent serum is that they don't do 
neutralizing assays. At least that's what Keza Deval said. Um, and there's clotting factors and so forth. So um, uh, I, I can't answer that. I have no idea. Sorry. If you want me to go on Rogan, write to him. You know, a bunch of you wrote to other people and they got me on. So if you want me to do it, write, write to uh, him. Thank you, Mario, for your contribution to the Nespresso supplies. I actually don't have one yet. Yeah, I should get one. And um, I just have a, a, a water thing now, a Brita. I need to get a carbonator, right? Thank you, Alexi, for your contribution. Really appreciate it. Would a person with recently broken bones have an increased chance of myocarditis? Is there anything in the body that changes during the bone healing process which may increase a chance of it? Don't know. Outside my wheelhouse, as they say. And I wouldn't um, give you an answer. That's not what I do. Maybe Sanjay Gupta would. When the mRNA vax first came out, 90% protection was for symptomatic. Any COVID. That's correct. But those tests were done within months after the vaccination when antibody levels are abnormally high. And I would argue that the real test is when your serum antibodies are low and you're depending on a memory response to an infection to protect you. There is no way that you're not going to get infected because it takes two to three days for the memory response to kick in, but you will be protected against severe disease, death, hospitalization, et cetera. So, yeah, efficacy against any COVID went down. That's normal. It's abnormal to have it so high so soon after vaccination. That, that's what I've always been saying. Now, some people have said, Sarah Gilbert said, she thinks the reason Delta does well is not because of immune evasion, but because it reproduces so quickly before your memory response has a chance to really contain it. That's an attractive hypothesis, although we'd need to have more evidence for that. In particular, you know, experiments in cell culture suggest that it can reproduce faster. But what about in people? Don't give me PCR data, please. Could you use a screen capture instead of writing stickies? Uh, I can do a screen capture. Yeah, you, you mean capture my um, chat? Well, the chat is is archived forever on YouTube, so I could just go back, but I don't really want to do that. What's the case for wearing the mask? Here's the case. So first of all, I didn't think we should stop wearing masks back in May when CDC said you could stop, okay? And then they... People stopped, they had big outbreaks, and then they said, go back. CDC thinks that some vaccinated people can transmit. That's why we're wearing masks. I think the transmission is really low. I think in a country with a good fraction of vaccination, but we're not high enough, right? What are we at, 70%? Not high enough yet. So a lot of people don't. So you make everyone wear a mask. You don't say if you're vaccinated because people are not to be trusted. They will not wear a mask even if they're not ma vaccinated. So it's a science and a social problem, right? Is it 100% impossible to have any long-term effects? No, I, I can't tell you that. That's what I told Jillian Michaels. That's what I told Lex Friedman. I can't guarantee you there are not going to be long-term side effects. However, long-term effects, we don't see it with other vaccines. And so I think you go on what your history is and look at what are you worried about? Be brave. Protect the world. Why do you think the vaccine is still believed to work? No evidence of this at stage in COVID-19. I, I don't know what you're talking about. Still believed to work? It does work, Abraham Lincoln. Uh. Heterologous SARS-CoV-2 booster vaccinations. Vaccines can be mixed. Shocking. 
Yes, they can be mixed. We suspected they would, but you know, you need to test it because if you don't and something happens, then you're in real trouble. So be cautious, right? Now, there are preprints on mixing vaccines, as you just saw there, but no, no peer-reviewed yet. And I think um, it's important because there are often holes in observational studies, right? Is there anything more current than two to nine times more reinfection with natural immunity versus vaccine Oklahoma study? There are some preprints, yes. I'm not really covering a lot of preprints on TWIV because I think uh, they have issues and they need to be sorted out before we look at them. Uh, Sputnik is the name of a virophage, also the vex, the Russian uh, COVID vaccine, you know, because they were the first to send up a satellite into space, and they called it Sputnik. So they said they were the first to make a COVID vaccine, so they called it Sputnik. There you go, National Jewish Center for Immunology and Respiratory Medicine, and there's an immunologist there, Pippa Marek, that's who I'm thinking about. I think she's done a lot on super antigens. Have you heard of tolovir? What is tolovir? Let's see. <laughs> what is tolovir? Todos medicine, and they've got some studies. What is the? What is it doing? You think I can find the mechanism of action in the first paragraph of the article? No, I don't, I've never heard of tolovir. Then they want my money to read further. Okay, it is a oral antiviral three, three, a protease inhibitor. Okay, uh, yeah, so Pfizer has a protease inhibitor as well. I think uh, they have potential. Besides the RNA polymerase, the protease is a good target, and we're going to see some of those, and we need to um, use multiple targets to minimize uh, resistance. Why does Amy love 68? So she is developing her own research project, right? I worked on polio for many years. She doesn't want to continue that. The virus is going to be eradicated soon. You can't work with most with two of the three serotypes. So she has developed her own program on 68 independent of me. And so it's, you know, it's her virus. And it's an interesting virus. It causes a respiratory infection. It can lead to paralysis. And that's really interesting how that happens. It seems to be increasing in frequency. So all interesting questions. So that's why she likes it very much. Uh, the virus will never be gone. No. It's here forever. It'll be. So there are four common cold coronas. This will be the fifth someday for sure. No question about that. Should I wait four or six months? Um, you can wait four to six months if you wish. I don't think it will change your response. It will probably make it better. Why aren't they changing it? Because they that's how it was trialed with the short interval, and they can't change it without submitting additional data. Thank you, Tom, for your um, support. Really appreciate it. Should we do more human challenge studies with less dangerous viruses? Well, um, we do challenge studies with common cold rhinoviruses. We do challenge studies with uh, certain influenza viruses, vaccine strains, for example. I don't think it's SARS-CoV-2 challenge makes any sense whatsoever. I know they've, they've done it in the UK without issues. I just think it's a bad idea. You risk giving long COVID to one of those participants. That's just not good. How about SEB super antigen sequence in the mRNA vaccine to replenish anti-SEB in older and 20% of people who never had it? You mean in its own, as its own, uh, or incorporating it into SARS-CoV-2? It may be that you don't need to. They, they cross-react, right? Um, I don't think uh, you'd need to do that. Yeah, 
It'd have to be tested, right? Can't imagine why the list 18 months hasn't worn you both down. Well, in some ways it probably has. Um, but I'm physically okay. I like what I do. And, and I think it's you guys that are really driving us. Look, I asked you to give a thumbs up. You went from 250 to 378. Uh, that's great. Children who have not exposed the virus by two years or due to quarantine have higher risk of developing some type of cancers or autoimmune diseases. You know, we think that educating your immune system is important, but I don't think that we can say that some types of cancers or autoimmune diseases are going to result. I think that's completely hypothetical. And so I would say we just don't know. Whatever happened to herd immunity... Well, I just think that we actually haven't reached the predicted percentage, but it's, remember, the vaccines, herd immunity is going to prevent a fraction of, of spreading. I think the spread in vaccinated people is very low. It's a very small percentage of the individuals. So I think uh, we, we are approaching it. Uh, what do you, what's the number? 70 to 80 percent? Um, I, I don't think we're there in, in a lot of countries. And Israel is over 80%. The UK is over 80%. But that leaves 20% of people that are still susceptible. So that's why you still have outbreaks. And I understand herd immunity is supposed to stop that. But you have to, I, I think herd immunity is a valid concept. It's been shown for other viruses. So something is wrong there in the calculations, perhaps. I don't know the answer. I don't know why media is concerned about Marburg because they got tired of COVID. Marburg is not going to cause a pandemic. It's ridiculous. Uh, do you want the white substance around the yolk of the eggs? Well, I don't know what your question is, but it's not white unless you cook it, right? <laughs> it's it's a straw-colored fluid. And you pull that out of an embryonated egg to get your influenza virus when you grow it in eggs. What do we know about how the airway microbiome interacts with SARS-CoV-2? Pretty much nothing. I suspect many people are looking at it, but hard to do because you need a BSL-3 to work on the virus. What new songs? None. I have no time and to do that. It takes time to learn things, but I, I put everything into teaching and communicating. Myocarditis and broken bones again. Why doesn't viral replication stop once inside a host cell? Uh, it eventually stops when the cell is killed by the virus, right? And the virus overwhelms the cell. It reprograms it to make more viruses. So the cell really doesn't have much of a chance. Okay, so this is another good point. W waning antibodies is not memory B cells no longer working. Yes, remember, nobody talks about memory B cells. They talk about antibody in the blood waning, but the memory B cells are still there, and they're, they're the ones that protect you. And don't forget the T cells, of course. Does vaccination followed by exposure also give super immunity? <laughs> we don't know. Um, it, I think it's likely that it would because, as you know, Recovery after infection followed by one dose gives you super immunity, but the, the study needs to be done. Yep. <laughs> you don't need to type in all caps. I can see your, your comment. It's a good question, and I would see it. Have, have some faith in the interest of your question, right? I heard that preventing the getting the flu shot helps prevent severe COVID. So there is some study that shows an association of, yeah, flu vaccination with lower. But you know those kinds of observational studies can be so confounded with things that 
make it look like it's an association, but it's not. So I would be careful in, before we conclude that. But if it makes people go out and get flu shots, go ahead. There's no downside to it, right? Uh, can't you get shingles from pox vaccine? If it's not shingles, you can get a rash. Smallpox vaccine give you a little lesion on your shoulder, but it's not shingles, no. Nope. Have you heard about any studies using various anti-cytokine drugs on new infections to study if there are some that attenuate or prevent PASC? So I, uh, we, we did a commentary on, on this a couple of weeks ago. And since, you know, early in this pandemic, we targeted specific cytokines like IL-6 and others. And it didn't work because it's a mix of cytokines that are causing the issue. So you, anti-inflammatory drugs like steroids in some cases work, not given too soon, but given later when you're in the cytokine storm. So... Um, no, this is probably not going to happen. Oh, what's the risk for heart inflammation? Gosh, you know, I, I had this number. Oh, I have it right here. Let's see. It's like 40 per million or something like that. It's really low. Much lower than myocarditis or, you know, pericarditis from COVID. All right, it's 10 p.m. And you guys are slowly leaving, I see. So I, it is my signal to... Uh, to say goodnight. I'm sorry we shortchanged you a half hour, but that was <laughs> the fault of New Jersey Transit. Not me. Uh, let's see if there are any uh, s uh, super chats or uh, contributions to acknowledge. Uh, nope, there are no more. So, folks, I would like to thank you for coming tonight. If you... Um, want to learn more we'll be back next wednesday and um i assume new jersey transit won't be late two weeks in a row if you would like to learn some virology i do a live stream virology course monday and wednesdays 11 a.m eastern u.s time meanwhile thank you all for coming i sincerely appreciate your participation in this lovely community and please uh, do be safe. Good night.